Hey everyone, Michelle Alexandria coming at you with a long video about my Sony A80J. I'm going, to, I'm prepping you right now to say it's going to be a long video because this is going to be a rambling video. But I want to give you my impressions on my 77 inch Sony A80J. I am not a professional reviewer. Uh, these are, I'm just some random smuck on YouTube who just bought a TV and I'm just going to talk about it for a few minutes, uh, tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. And that's about it. I will give you the headline. If all you care about is, if all you want is a TV with probably one of the best picture qualities out there, you can't go wrong with the Sony A80J. You can't go wrong with it. It's a great TV. Picture quality is outstanding. But you are making a lot of quote-unquote sacrifices um, to get this picture quality. As an overall package, I think this TV really sucks and it's terrible. And and if you if you buy this TV now, you'll probably regret. You'll probably end up regretting it in a few months when Sony gets off their butt and actually releases a TV that has all the features that it's supposed to have. And I'm talking about gaming people, and I'm not a super gamer, but I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. But first, I want to talk about all the additional features and things that I was excited about with this TV um, that, no one's meant, that no one mentions and that I'm intensely disappointed in. Let's start with uh, Bravia, let's start with the Bravia Core uh, Bravia Core. I was so excited when Bravia Core was announced. This is supposed to be a high bit rate streaming service exclusive to Sony Bravia TVs with the XR processor. And it has it features IMAX enhanced, DTX surround sound, and it's supposed to be the bee's knees, as old people used to say. And it's none of that. It is a catfish. It is ter it's I don't want to say the service is terrible. If this is probably a core, you go in, you you can you can actually redeem up to five movies, but there are movies you can redeem. Uh there's actually a decent selection of movies you can redeem. You can redeem and my recommendations would be uh, probably nothing in here. Because I actually own a lot of these these movies already. Um so so yeah, your your selection, yeah. I, I may do a more in-depth uh, look at Bravia Core a little later, but this is a selection of some things. Um, I'm trying to find something that would be worth it redeeming. Sicario, Sicario, Superfly, I Hated Venom. Equalizer 2 is a great redemption. Of course, all your Spider-Man stuff, like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. But don't most, of the, most people already own like the Spider-Man movies. Charlie's Angels, I still need to watch. Miss Bala, actually, like, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, brilliant movie. I hated it the first time I saw it in theaters, but when I watched it again at home, brilliant movie. Loved it. Uh, typical Tarantino. Uh, MIB International, terrible movie. I love Little Women. If you want it, Little Women, it would be a good redemption. Good use of your redemption. It's full screen, and it's a beautiful looking movie, actually. Um, Again, Spider-Man, Zombieland, Double Tap. Yeah, I, I love Spider-Man, Double Chat, Double Tap. Brightborn is way overrated. Uh, Black and Blue, really good movie. And, and I'm getting off. I'm getting off track. So, so these are the movies you can actually redeem on as part of your uh, purchase of the Sony A80J. So, if you care about this, which I actually do, and one of the main reasons why I bought this TV is because I I really wanted to see. Um, what this Bravia Core was all about, and I'm and I'm what I'm as enhanced was all about, and I'm kind of disappointed in both. And I I have a one I have a one gigabyte uh, fiber optic cable in my apartment, so that's not it. I just don't think the bit rate streaming is all that much better than what I get on my Apple TV right now, or any other streaming service. So you so here in the movies that you can actually stream are these are these are IMAX movies you could IMAX movies you could redeem and then they have the special session for IMAX movies you can actually stream. So let let's just click on something. 
And one of, my, one of the things I really don't like about IMAX Enhanced on this TV is it doesn't even automatically switch you to the IMAX Enhanced mode when you click on it. So, so everything feels a little bit harder than it needs to be on this TV. So if you go here, and you can see I'm in custom picture mode. So if I click on one of these movies, one of these IMAX Enhanced movies, you would think it would automatically switch to IMAX Enhanced mode. So let's see what happens. So let's click on, I'm risking a copyright strike. So, so you click over here, and, and you see it's still in custom mode. Um, so it doesn't automatically switch over to IMAX Enhanced mode, but you can see it actually is in HDR. You can see it up there. And let's go back to settings. Now, if you switch it over to IMAX Enhanced mode, it makes everything look really dark. So, so see how bright and see how bright and punchy. See how kind of bright and punchy that is in custom? Now you go to IMAX hand. See how you lost some color? Cinema, standard. I actually do. I'm one of those crazy people who likes vivid mode. The other thing about IMAX enhanced mode is I was hoping it meant no more black bars, but you still get a lot of movies with black bars. The only thing, the only thing IMAX enhanced mode does is you get, you get movies that are actually in... Uh, where the scenes shot in IMAX are actually shown. And I hate aspect ratio switching more than black bars. I'm like, either give me a full screen presentation or give me letterbox, but don't give me both. Because all it does is it makes me hate black bars more. Because at one point you get the beautiful screen, and then the next scene you get the black bars again. And you realize how much picture real estate you are actually missing. So IMAX enhance. Terrible. Don't buy this TV for IMAX Enhanced. The Netflix Calibrated Mode. I was or Bravia Core. The the next the Netflix Calibrated Mode. I really wanted to get. I really desperately wanted to see Netflix Calibrated, and man, was I I was so very very disappointed with Netflix Calibrated Mode. Um, primarily because uh, Netflix Calibrated Mode makes everything look really super dark and washed out. And everything else. The one, another thing about the picture quality. There's no black. I have not seen any black crush on this TV. Look how nice and clean the uh, black levels are on this TV. And the other, the other thing I really love about this TV is, unlike the LG, LG TVs, maybe it's because I know how to uh, work from, with my LG TVs. I always find myself like trying to fit, fuss around with the settings in a picture to get it to how I want. On this Sony A80J, I don't do that really. I mean, plus I hate how the settings work on the, on Sony TVs in general. But just out of the box, I, I fuss with a couple of things, and after that, I don't really touch. I don't really touch the settings all that much on this TV anymore. Like some some days. Some days you feel like a nut, some days you don't. I, some days, most times I watch everything in my custom mode. Other days, you know, I like a nice vivid mode. I like a, especially with SDR content. I, I like a nice vivid on SDR content. The colors, the brightness level on this TV is outstanding. Um, so, so yeah. The, the, so, since I have a game on, the thing I, I hate, I hate gaming. I kind of hate gaming on this TV. Um, if you're using, if all you're using is, a, is the PlayStation 5, then this TV is great for the PlayStation 5. It, it works. Um, you don't have to mess with it all that much. Everything just kind of works. But the minute you switch over to, the minute I switch over to the Xbox Series X, everything starts to break. I mean, the audio, the, the, the you have to set your, you have to do some weird specific settings on your Xbox Series X just to actually get it to properly play audio. What kind of nonsense is that? I'm not a super gamer, so I'm perfectly fine with 4K, HDR, 60, uh, FPS gaming. I, I can't tell the difference between 60 FPS and 120 FPS. Um, so that's not the reason why I hate gaming on this TV. I hate gaming on this TV because 
um, on my Xbox Series X, I have to do all these weird settings to get the TV to actually work properly. I it won't. It definitely doesn't work with 4K 120 HDR on the Series X because if you have it in that setting, then your audio you're going to get a lot of audio dropouts. So you have to drop it. You have to manually drop it down to 4K 60 or something, and then. Um, the TV doesn't support 1440p. Now, I could be wrong about that, but it doesn't. It, so it's either 1080p or, um, or uh, 4K60, and you have to manually constantly change your settings so that my games on my Xbox Series X will work right. I hate that. That drives me nuts. And the, pro and the fact of the matter is Sony will probably come out with a TV that properly supports that stuff in about four months anyway. And I'm paying like $3,000 for this TV um, for it to be this janky. So, yeah. Um, so this TV is going back at the beginning of January. And then I will come up with something else. I'll do a couple of more videos on this TV over the next week. But, yeah, those are my impressions of this TV. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of half at, half assy, but what am I supposed to say about a TV? I'm not a professional. I'm just trying to tell you my my basic knee jerk opinion. Um, great picture, not better than LG. Not even much better than my LG C10. Um, but it's it the overall package that truly fails. And I haven't even gotten into any of Sony's anti-consumer behavior or any of that kind of stuff. But, yeah. If you have this TV, let us know what you think. I'm, again, look at how beautiful that picture is. That picture is stunning in here. Oh, and the YouTube app. YouTube app doesn't really... YouTube app is very buggy on this TV. YouTube app is very, 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 very buggy on this TV. Did I mention how buggy, this, buggy the YouTube app is? It's buggy. It's buggy, people. YouTube app is very buggy. It, I actually had to reinstall my TV, um, uh, do, do a full reset of my TV to try to get the YouTube app to work again. And now it's working, but it's still buggy. And I'm using a hard wire, uh, wire so the Wi-Fi isn't particularly good on this TV. And beyond like the Series X audio, it the audio issues I'm experiencing with the Series X, I'm experiencing random dropouts um, when I watch movies and other things on this TV. So some, 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 I go weeks where there's nothing wrong and everything's working perfectly and the birds are chirping and it's like, ah! But then I go through periods where I'm constantly getting audio dropouts and that's maddening and frustrating. Um, that, or is it maddening and frustrating? I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I don't know. I, I like this TV. It's just that I don't think it's worth keeping. And I don't want to go back in the TV kabuki dance because the, this TV, the panel was 100% clean. It was panel, the panel quality is flawless. I don't have any banding. I don't have any DSC. I don't have any vignetting or anything. Now, granted, I've never had those. I know people claim they have those issues with LG TVs, but I've never had any kind of panel issues with LG TVs either. But the Sony is clean to like a whole other level, it seems like. And I will say the clarity on this TV is really nice and sharp and clean and crisp. And in that sense, is again, it's better than LG TVs in terms of clarity. It is a lot clearer. I just don't think it's like night and day different clearer where, you know, I would notice it long term and where it's worth sacrificing everything else in order to get this TV. I do use an HDMI 2.1 splitter with this TV, so there's that. But I just want a TV that has all the features. Why can I not get that? So anyway... I hope I'll be shocked if you guys stayed around long enough for the, for this rambling video. But I did the best I could, people. So anyway, hope you guys have an amazing weekend. I just put the cruise on the Royal Caribbean. So I'll be cruising in a couple of weeks. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, talk to you guys later. Have a great holiday. Bye.